player for a school that's produced, and the the numbers change, of course, each and every year, but right up in the top two or three for all Americans and uh, first round NFL draft picks and uh, pro football hall of famers and whatever category you want to place um, Heisman trophy winners, of course, as well. Who would be your favorite player in the history of Ohio state football? I do not have a guess at this one. It is for similar reasons uh, as Similar reasons I'm going to justify why this is my favorite Ohio State player of all time. So there are so many that I could name, and I'm sure I am going to screw this up. <laughs> you can't and screw this, it up. This is well, right? Exactly right. I mean, I'm sure if I picked, maybe I don't know. There maybe a few I would pick. If I said Terrell Pryor, people would be like, "What?" <laughs> That's maybe my son's not. favorite player. Oh my gosh. Joe Belgerman, maybe. I don't know. Justin Swick. Those would be maybe not great choices. Um, I am going to go with a, a very vanilla choice, but I think it's safe. Um, and and I think he, he cannot be usurped, in my opinion, barring some horrible, dramatic incident. And that's Archie Griffin. And uh, part of it is that he's a Columbus guy. Uh, I'm a Columbus native. I love my city. I love my state. Uh, Archie's not a big guy, but he certainly has got incredible heart and work ethic. And I think what he was able to do with Woody and, and um, in combination, those two in concert, again, were meant to be on that team together. And I don't think it gets covered a whole lot what Archie had to go through, um, you know, even in the 70s, what he had to go through as far as uh, the racial tensions and some of that stuff that was still going on. Um, Woody did a, a great job of attempting to uh, squash a lot of it, but Archie still had to go through some of that and has come out one of the most positive, uplifting, uh, magical people the fact that he still is the only player to have two Heisman trophies. Um, I love this story about Archie where he was so excited uh, to get on the field for the very first time that he forgot his helmet and had to come running back over to the sidelines and put his helmet on. So um, what Archie's been able to do uh, as an alumnus and, and as uh, someone who – uh, loves Ohio State and Columbus and the state of Ohio to his core. He is such an incredible class act. And again, you can't really, Archie was meant to play on that team during that era. He was able, and, and Ray for that matter, he was able to do something that we had never seen before. And I think he even kind of paved the way. He was a pioneer for what running backs were going to look like in the future at Ohio State. Okay. What I'm about to say may be a bit sacrilegious. Okay. I don't know that Archie Griffin should have won two Heisman trophies. He did, though. He, he, he did. <laughs> and he was a great, great player. And I am looking at the numbers right now because I had an idea of what they were. And then what his competition was in his final season in 1975. So we have to skew the numbers and put them into context because teams weren't passing the ball. So throw the quarterbacks out the door unless they ran for a bunch of yardage and, and their teams won. They never won the Heisman. Running backs won the Heisman Trophy. Everybody ran the ball. I'm going to give you a guess, let you guess on how many touchdowns Archie Griffin scored in 1975. So if I'm not mistaken, Pete, um, Pete Johnson, Johnson, thank you. Actually, Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. Yep. Uh, again, another one of my very favorite people. I cannot believe I just blanked on his last name. Uh, he Pete actually Bengals. held the, the record for a while and around the same time period. So what was, so you said how many touchdowns in that 75 season? Yes. 10. So this is the oddity here. 
is that you're right. Pete Johnson got the football inside. Well, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. You're not right. Your okay. your number is not correct. Okay. okay. You're right so in your excited. thinking. Don't gas me up like that. This is just an odd situation. So Archie Griffin's carrying the ball most of the time. True. So he's got the yardage, but Pete has the scoring record. Because Actually, this back. is odd. Archie Griffin carried the ball 262 times. Pete Johnson, 227. It's not that much of a disparity. No. So they're basically splitting carries. And Archie Griffin averaged five and a half yards per carry and Pete Johnson 4.7. So to mm. fill in where Claire was going with this is that Archie Griffin was the main back and he's carrying the ball. So on your typical 80 yard drive, he's running the ball most first and second downs and they're going down the field. Then Pete Johnson, and this isn't entirely true because the numbers are going to dispel this to a certain extent. But the narrative is basically that they get inside the five yard line. In comes Pete Johnson, who is basically a glorified like left tackle. Right? He was huge. <laughs> and he then he would run for all the touchdowns. This is amazing. Archie Griffin, I didn't know that it was this bad. I knew that it was something in this range. Archie Griffin ran for four touchdowns his senior year at Ohio State. And Pete Johnson ran for 25. Wow. <laughs> 25 touchdowns. Oh my gosh. And Pete wow. Johnson. And now don't. Okay. So we're going to totally. Geek and he out ran here. for a thousand yards and Pete Johnson was nowhere in the Heisman balloting in the top 10. So. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong here too, about who broke that scoring record. Was it Mike Nugent? Oh, the scoring record. The scoring record. Probably a kicker. Uh, Keith Byer scored a lot of touchdowns, but he didn't hit 25. He had the 84 season when he finished second to Doug Flutie in the Heisman balloting, and he scored a lot of touchdowns that year, but I don't think he scored 25. I know a lot of people thought Keith Byer should have definitely won the Heisman that year, but it was stripped away by the Hail Mary. Of exactly. Flutie. He won the Heisman based on one play that was not, it was impressive. He threw the ball 50 yards, but he just threw the ball. And, yeah, right. And, he, there was no touch on it or, or aim. It just happened to be a spectacular ending. And to me, I say this around that time of year, every year, to me, that's the most overrated play in the history of college football. I completely, I, I'm, you're not going to get me to, to uh, move on that either. I, I, I agree. It wasn't a bowl game. It wasn't a championship game. It wasn't a rivalry game. Those teams had lost. Miami lost five games that year. They weren't that good. And it was just on Thanksgiving weekend. So a lot of people were watching, watching. football. And Doug Flutie was a bit of a, I'm going to avoid the word freak. You know what I mean? He was just a different type of player. And he was fun to watch. And he was exciting. And Boston College was awful before that. And he lifted them to prominence. So but we see Hail Marys like one like every other oh, week God. in college football or two a week or whatever it is. We see a couple dozen every season that are roughly what we saw there. Yeah, just. <laughs> Was it? Yeah, no, I completely agree. Keep Byer, Byers and his, uh, his shoeless, his shoeless mm -hmm. run. Uh, still, I think a lot of Ohio State fans, that's cemented in their memory, too. Yes, it is. He ran for 274 and five touchdowns against Illinois, losing 24 to nothing and coming back for the win. All right, Claire. Trip down memory lane. I'll do it any any time. I'm game. I will too. I love it. Claire Crawford, the Ozone, and uh her podcast with Joe Dexter. Oh, hail no. Claire, it's always a fun discussion. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on.